Oh, that one really doesn't either. Um, yeah, I think we'll get a rebuild kit for these under the car. And the whole car is very nice underneath. Very, very clean. Over here is one of the calipers. I'm ready to paint it. Oh, I'm going to paint this caliper. I will paint the other one as well. Let those dry. And I think while they dry, and sure, we will move on with painting the interior. And that's the last seat on the car. Oh, hey there. Didn't see you guys there. Welcome to part two and I'm painting the floors. I've done the passenger side and half the driver's side. So I've done the front, I'm doing the rear now. It's going pretty well. It's going to be nice and shiny black. I think one coat will do. Maybe we'll have to add a second, but we'll see when it dries. This stuff is great. I really, really like this paint. Combi Color by rust -Oleum. You can get it in lots of different colors and the nice thing is you can sort of blend it yourself so i have one can you can get a very dark green that's really close to mid 70s jag british racing green but if you add a little bit of black to it it's very close so i've used that to paint engine bays and other things and sure it's not as good as regular car paint but it's paint over rust which is great so it's a lot of rust converters i've never had rust come back where i've painted it and uh, it's worked really well, especially on floor pans. So if you get in with wet feet and the floors get wet, especially in cars you use, I've never had it come back. So it's a good paint. I've also used to, you know, on furniture outside and things like that. So all I've done is I wire brush it with by hand because we're in the interior and then just a scotch pad over it, vacuumed it out, uh, wiped the clean with some thinner and uh, that's it. So I only have this part left to um, left to paint, and then uh, I'm gonna let this dry probably a couple weeks before I put interior back in here. So probably one of the last things I'll do will put the seats back in. But also I did remove the rear seat, so we'll get to that glass. Anyways, I'll finish painting this, and then we'll move over to uh, some mechanical thing. Got all the floors painted now. While everything was still a little bit tacky, I did a second coat on it. So hopefully this should be it. It covers really well this paint and it does stretch out. So it does look as if you've sprayed it, but I mean, we're not going for perfect results here. Most of this, well, all of this will be on your sound deadening and carpets. Just wanted to, um, to be good and not to rust. So, I mean, if you want a perfect job, you need to go down to bare metal and remove everything. I haven't done that. I've just scuffed up the areas, you know, scuffed up at, at any of the surface rust and anything left on it and just painted on top of it. But very, very happy with those results. I think the owner will be as well. I'm gonna take some pictures, send off to him. But uh, we gotta move on to some other things. I don't wanna reassemble the brakes yet because I just want those calipers to dry a little bit longer before I do that. I'm gonna put them out in the sun again tomorrow. But I think, all right, that just fell off. But I think we're going to tackle the hubs so they're ready when it goes back on. If you want to see a detailed video on setting those up, I've already done that. But uh, remove the dust cap, cast the nut, remove this whole thing. We'll put on the bench, have a look at those bearings, clean them up, put them back together, set them, and then we're good to go with the front suspension to put the brakes back on. So I pulled both hubs off and I'm very happy I did because I haven't found anything, um, you know, bearings are going to be fine. There were no noise in them, anything like that, but I don't think they would have survived that road trip because the grease is ancient. So I haven't found any scoring or anything. I've gone through, I haven't cleaned it up. I'm going to clean it up, you know, perfectly, get all the old grease out and check, but they do look fine and they were very nice and quiet before and absolutely no play. They were well adjusted, but the grease is just really old and there's not that much of it. I'm a fan of a lot of grease 
and um, this isn't much. It doesn't smell burnt or anything like that, but there should definitely be more in the cap as well. And the other side is exactly the same. This side has a newer style bearings for a place at some point because it has a newer style seal in the back. This one has the older style seal. But um, yeah, definitely happy that we're doing this. So like I said, I'm going to clean them off. I'll inspect them. I'll grease them. You don't need to see that. You've seen me grease bearings before. Put this back together, adjust them, and uh, they should be good to go. If you do want a detailed video, I pretty recently put one on the channel, so you can check that out. I'm replacing one of these bearings and all of that. But we're just going to clean, inspect it, put it back. But uh, check out your bearings, you guys. It's uh, This is definitely not a moment too soon, and I don't think it would have survived the road trip. A little while later, and we have two cleaned up hubs. All the old grease is out of them. And I've also tested the grease nipple, and it was just stuck with old grease. So they work, and they're cleaned up, and the races look really good. I've also just cleaned up the bearings. I soaked them in my parts washer first, and then uh, it has a pump and a spray nozzle. I just spray them out, and then after that, I have um, actually just run some brake clean through them, compressed air, and now perfectly nice clean, and there's not any wear on them at all. They're in really good shape. Nothing wrong with them. I'll pack them with grease. Fill up the hubs with grease, put them back on the car, and then we can move on to the brake calipers. The hubs are on the car, and they're all set up, and we're almost ready for the brake calipers. I rebuilt one of them, and then I thought, you know what? I'll show you guys on the other ones. We've got two pistons left to do. Here are the new stainless pistons. They look great. And we have half of a gasket set here. This is really straightforward stuff. It's just be careful and... Uh, don't, don't use any force, but I'm going to set up the tripod and show you guys the last two pistons in there. The only thing I've done to prepare is remove the old seals, of course. I did that before I cleaned them. And during cleaning and everything, you might get a little bit of surface rust right here. And while doing that, I've just used some oil and some light light sandpaper. Sand it out, clean it out, so that is nice and clean now. Got a cap here of some brake fluid. And... Just grab a seal, put a little bit of oil on it. Don't have to go crazy. Just a little bit of brake oil or brake fluid, whatever you want to call it. And then you just put that into place. That's what's great about these types of calipers is that it doesn't really matter if you have a lot of surface rust or anything on there because the surface in there doesn't do any sealing. It's this gasket and the um, pistons. So that's why new pistons are a good idea. The old ones were iron that, or some type of steel and they're chromed. And uh, after, you know, water and stuff gets in there because brake fluid likes to absorb water, then uh, it rusts. So I'm just gonna put a light smear on here. And then we'll do the same on one of the pistons. And you see that it should slide in pretty much all the way with your fingers. Sometimes you may need to help them a little bit, but if they don't go in, that means that they're crooked or something is going wrong. They should slide in pretty nicely. Sometimes you can help them a little bit with just like a long screwdriver or a pry bar on top of them. There you go. If they were to stick a tiny bit. So that one is all the way in. This one is almost getting there. There we go, that one is in, and so is that one. Before you completely bottom them out though, grab the dust caps, or oh, dust seals or whatever you want to call them. Put those on top of the pistons. And then, now I would remove the gloves, because at least in my opinion, 
This part is easier with the gloves. Try and get them seated like that. And we'll try to get them seated there. So I'm going to try and move this so we're more in the viewing field for you guys. And then you have these little snap rings. It's just, you know, a piece of wire under some tension. And honestly, this is the trickiest part. I'm going to do what I normally do. We'll set my chair up here next to you guys. And okay, see. Second try when sitting down in a chair. I don't know, it's just a lot easier for me that way. And then we're gonna do the last one. And then what I like to do is just get a little bit of screwdriver. There you go. Make sure it's completely down in the bottom. And that's it. That is one rebuilt brake caliper. I'll put those on the car. We'll put on the new hoses, new pads, and all of that. And then we're ready, but we're not going to bleed the brakes until I've had a look at the rear ones, which um, I may do actually right after these are on. Got the rear up on jack stands also. Just popped it in neutral, and I turned both tires. And honestly, they spin really well. So we got good hopes for the rear brakes. They looked good when I just crawled under earlier, but let's head on under there with a flashlight, some pliers, see if we can push them in. Hopefully we can, because I really don't have time to, um, to mess with rear brakes on an IRS. As you can hopefully see, those pads have quite a lot of meat on them. They're fairly new, so the pistons aren't pushed out that much. And, um, Judging by the light, light surface rust on them, I think that they've been rebuilt at some point. Someone's probably, you know, blasted them or something. Because the pipes up there and everything, that looks like really rather shiny. So let's hope that's true. I am just going to grab a pair of pliers here. I probably can't do it one-handed. I can't really fit my tripod under here. But push those in there. Sorry, push them in right there. And uh, I'll let you guys know if they move and then... Well, it'll be pretty obvious because we'll be able to rattle them around. Okay, that side moved extremely easily, so I'm going to actually try and do this one-handed and show you guys. I believe that these are fairly recently rebuilt. Look at that. I mean, I have never, ever had rear calipers move that easily. Look at that. Okay. Yeah, there you are. They're freshly rebuilt. All right, dodge the bullet there. Um, don't mind dropping the IRS, but uh, when you do, it always turns into replacing a lot of things. And yes, you can get these out. On the California car like this, I could probably dare to get these out because they probably won't be stuck in really that that much. You know, get the calipers out with in the car, but it's just a pain with the... Um, parking brake and all of that uh, my hands are not that small so I can't easily get up there but uh, okay we are so lucky I'm just gonna grab a little bit of penetrating fluid spray it on the bleed nipple make sure that they're ready when I'm gonna bleed the brakes and let me see over here we have the brake hose we're gonna replace that so I'll spray those fittings as well but um, we'll let that sit for a little bit I don't want to break anything. So I think the next thing we'll do is we'll head over to the bench and we'll strip one of the carbs. So we're going to do something I really love. Exploratory surgery. So we got the other carb sitting up here off camera. So just grab one of them. Like I mentioned in the previous part, 
I have tuned some Strombergs. I'm very used to SUs. Um, I've never rebuilt a Stromberg, so this will be a lot of fun. These were technically working, just running a little bit rich. I personally think that the richness issue is just a choke being stuck. There's a water choke on each. I think there's like a bimetal inside there. And, you know, coolant goes through there. I'm guessing that can get gummed up. So I'm hoping an ultrasonic cleaner will fix that. So I picked up two gasket sets. One for each carb. I did pick up these. Can't remember what they're called now, but there's a crack in one of them. So I'm not sure if that needs to be vacuum tight or whatever, but picked up one of those covers and I picked up diaphragms as well. So um, let's dig in. And even if you might be used to taking apart carbs, if you have two of them, you just take one apart at a time for a few reasons. You don't want to you know, mess them up, take parts from one and put on another. Because usually on twin carbs like this, they're balanced and they're, you know, a set. And they're meant to go together in that way. So people have definitely been in here before because we have a washer missing on one of them. So I'm going to see if I can get a hold of something like that. That top just put to the side, the spring, and there's that. So what I wanted to look at is, is there an adjustment in here? Because most Strombergs, you um, use a special tool and it goes, you just remove the piston or the damper here. And you put the tool in here and that's how you tune it by raising and lowering the needle but on an SU you raise and lower the jet however I know that there are some Strombergs that are not adjustable and this is a California car maybe that is the case or I'm worried that that is the case I'm not even sure if I'm gonna be able to see in there okay there's definitely an indentation all the way in the bottom there's oil sitting there we'll get back to that in a little bit we'll set this thing upside down have the last of the oil run out but I just want to know if these are the adjustable ones or not. I hope they are. Because you see there is a plug here. And technically you should be able to, I know on some of them, move there. But um, this will all be a lot of fun. What I want to do next is we'll grab a pair of scissors. And we'll have a look at this gasket set. Just because I want to make sure I have that gasket. So we have, do we not have that? Is there not a gasket in there? So that's that one. That one is, is the bottom one. Hmm. Huh. Okay. Well, there's a first for everything. At least there's a lot of washers and things in here. We'll put this to the side and then we'll figure out what we need. So, um, let's see if we can get that off. It's turning now. All 
Okay, we can go back to the bench now. I really hope I do have the right gasket set because I mean there is the UK, not the UK, but an EU version of this card, which is basically for Sweden, and then there is the US version. I really hope that there's nothing massively sort of missing in here. Okay. All right, that is loose. And there is all of that inside. So this is exactly what I was expecting. Just a lot of crystallized goo from the coolant. And that is why probably none of this is moving. So that's my hope that this, an ultrasonic cleaner, will run miracles. Because here is the mechanism in here. And that seems to at least be moving a bit. So that's really good. And I'm guessing that opens the throttle butterflies here and probably, let's see, where is it? I'm guessing it lowers the jet. All right, let's continue exploring. Seems to be a pretty big float chamber compared to uh, SUs, especially the HS ones. But I think it's pretty big floats in there, so I probably don't have you know a lot more fuel in there. It's just a bigger chamber. And. How this looks inside will be just a good indication of what the fuel tanks are like. I have checked in the back, the original style fuel filter is in place. So we're going to service that. Okay, so that was a shorter one. Let's see if this one is a shorter one also. Uh huh. And. And this is a long one. Ooh, that's really clean. Tiny bit just right there. But really nothing at all. Nice and clean inside. That's good. I'm going to put these screws with that so we don't lose anything. I got a new gasket for here. So... We can remove that. Here is the flow assembly. You can usually just pull the pin. Goes usually one way. Oh, it just seems to pop out, okay. And this is honestly, I mean, if you, like say you have carbs on your car and you've never taken them apart, I think a spare set and just explore them. It's really the best way. I think, yes, you can read a manual, look at videos and things, but take them apart, explore them. There is the needle and seat and that did not come in a kit and they were pretty expensive. So this one was working. So we're just going to clean it out and that should be fine. Let's take this cracked housing off and just see what's in there. Let's need a finer screwdriver. Let's see if this one does the trick. Yep. Okay, seems to be a cover for for something. But there's no gasket or anything in there. So I think, I mean, 
It was very cheap, that part. So I'm glad I got a new one. Because you probably should not get dirt and dust in there. Well, let's continue just taking the choke mechanism apart. And is that it? Little rubber mallet. That came off. I think I have that gasket. I recognize that. So that's good. Well, peel that back. Okay, so there's fuel in there. <laughs> this is just pretty exciting. Hmm. Yeah, really a very complicated carburetor, at least in my opinion, compared to SUs. But we got fuel going there. But why? It's definitely part of the enrichment, but uh, I thought that the enrichment was just moving that jet, but it seems to be extra fuel. All right. Well, I gotta do some research. Okay, over here is an adjuster. We're gonna leave that alone for now. I think we're gonna take this thing apart. Like a little check valve. And that was all carboned up. So this is going in ultrasonic cleaner as well. And we've got this left. Probably by now we have someone yelling at the screen or um, typing away furiously on their keyboard. That I don't know what I'm doing. Well, I may not be an expert in Stromberg's, but uh, you got to start somewhere. This is what it was like the first time I took apart an SU years ago. And uh, you just, you got to learn. And I haven't ruined anything. I do have one just like it that I can have a look at. I do have this video of me taking it apart. There's that screw, but I'm wondering, does that hold it together as well? And this is some vacuum thing. Because there's vacuum connected to that. And I think that I did not have to take that out. But I think we're just going to clean everything, just make sure that all passages and everything just move the way they're supposed to. Because the car did run pretty well, it was rich, but I think that's the major problem. And this thing not really moving. Okay, so that popped out now, and now it's... So that is spring-loaded. And then this is, you see, that's in. And then as that spring moves out, yeah, you see, it's just stuck a lot. That moves out, and then that will raise your idle. And then as it warms up, this will move in and lower your idle back down. So that's the thing that wasn't working because it was rich, but it just wouldn't get erased idle when cold. But yeah, just some gaskets to move out here and we're good. I'm gonna fire up the ultrasonic cleaner, get that nice and warm, and we're just gonna start soaking things in there. But you have to wait for the next part to see how everything turns out. See how nice and clean this turns up, see if we're going to polish it or not. 
see if all this will start moving freely. But I think we'll remove that cover. We'll lay that in there as a good start. This I'm really curious if we can get working again. So we'll put that in there. And uh, what else should run in the first batch of things? Maybe this little thing? All right. So we'll put this in ultrasonic clean there and you'll see the next part how this all turns out. Just as I put the camera away, I realized we forgot one thing and I realized another thing. So I cleaned out the inside with brake clean in here and yes, there is that little adjuster in the bottom. So great, these are adjustable. And I was thinking, this is not crystallized coolant, at least I hope not, because coolant should probably not be in there. It's probably some type of grease that has just um, crystallized because I uh, held my finger on that side and blew in on that side and it, nothing came out here. So um, I think the hot water just circulates through here and then, you know, it residually heats up this that moves uh, through this cover. And then in here we have the little mechanism and everything. So um, we're going to soak this in ultrasonic cleaner and then join me in the next part and we'll see how nice this carb looks when everything's been cleaned up. And that's it for part two. I think we made a lot of progress, but there's still a lot left to do. The clock is ticking, but um, I think we're going to make it. Join me in part three where we'll get the carbs out of the ultrasonic cleaner, see what they look like and put them back together and hopefully they'll look really good. And um, hopefully I do have the right gasket set for all of that. Then. We got a lot of things left to do on the engine. We got all the belts to do, all the hoses and just service items. We're going to do the oil filter when the carbs are off because it's just a lot easier to get to. That canister style filter is quite big. And uh, lots of things still have the power steering leak. Yeah, the list goes on and on and on. But I hope you guys are enjoying this series. And um, as you noticed, I'm bringing them out really quickly after another. So hopefully everything goes well I'll continue that and you guys can enjoy the series you know with not too much delay between the episodes anyway if you like this video please give a thumbs up share it with your friends if you're not already subscribed to the channel please do subscribe to the channel it really does help out a lot until next time I'm Adam this was Lumifa Classic I'll see you soon